Hey everyone, my name is Rainer and welcome back to this week's market analysis. So last week was pretty funny, you know, because I said earlier, you know, last week that I'll try to get my audio fixed together and I thought it was fixed. So apparently the introduction portion was fixed, but when it comes to the chart, the audio again was out of sync and I did mess up once more. So I do apologize, alright? So hopefully, hopefully this week, you know, I'll get my things together, you know, hopefully the audio sounds smooth in the introduction as well as in the chats. So I'd like to thank Felix for that because he was the one who actually sounded out to me that my audio was a little out of, out of sync. So that led me to, you know, go and crack my brains, figure out what is wrong and, you know, hopefully this week, keeping my fingers crossed, this week, that, you know, things will turn out fine. So this week, right, regarding the market analysis, I'll be looking to do a macro perspective of everything around the world, right? We look at the Forex markets, we look at the indices, the bonds, as well as the metals and commodity markets. So just to give you an idea, you know, what's going on around the world and see if it does help you with your trading. So quite a bit to cover this week, so let's roll. So first up, let's look at the chart of the Euro Dollar Weekly. So Euro Dollar Weekly, we see that you no know, price is actually still in a downtrend, pretty obvious. So let me highlight to you guys. So we have to see this strong downtrend that's going on on the Euro Dollar Weekly. So we see that price did a high of 1.4 sometime back and traded to a low of what I think was 10104 down here. So you can see now we know that price had this impulse move lower. Then it sort of like consolidate before breaking out lower. They retrace, then it break down lower. And once more, right? If you ask me what, what's happening over the last three weeks, you know, price seems to be at the moment still doing a retracement higher, right? Before possibly taking another step lower. So this is what I see on the weekly chart. And if you want to look at the daily, so again, longer term, you know, price is still bearish because there's no signs of that, you know, price wants to, you know, be bullish just yet, right? But one thing to note is that Price has been respecting the 20 and 50 period moving average for quite a while now and price is once more in this zone again. So whether you, whether you break out higher or you know or trade lower from here, you know, only that you know time will tell. So it's something to pay attention to on the euro dollar and something to you know keep a lookout for. So looking next, Aussie dollar. So Aussie dollar, again similar theme as the euro dollar because it's a dollar denominated. So again we see bearish price action on the Aussie dollar. We see this strong sell-off. Over here, followed by a consolidate consolidation, then another sell-off, a slight retracement, another sell-off, and price, if you ask me, you know, it seems to be doing another consolidation once more. Could this be the bottom of Aussie dollar or, you know, or could price trade lower again, you know, time will tell. But look at the price action of this chart, right? There's no signs of that price wanting to, reversal, to reverse just yet, right? So I would anticipate another move lower for the Aussie dollar as well. So on the daily chart, again, you can see price did a... A false breakout towards the downside over here, right? So I think false breakout before it does did a slight rally higher. So again, something to watch is that you know the 20 and 50 is providing good resistance for the Aussie dollar as well. So something to pay attention to and see if it does trade higher or lower in the coming weeks. Another pair look is dollar yen, right? Dollar yen is actually I'll say it's like a it's like a beast, you know. It, it, it will always, you know, find time to wake up and find time to sleep, right? If you look at a historical chart pattern of the dollar yen, right? Look at the weekly perspective you see that price, right? Strong impulse move higher. Then it went into sleep, you know, got into consolidation, went into sleep once more. Then it does break up higher, but you know, very weak, right? Because you look at the candles, it's all very small size. So it doesn't show much momentum behind all these moves. Then it went to sleep once more for quite a long period of time. I think this was almost, I think, September to August, I think. Wow, close to a year, all right? Went to sleep, right? Consolidation. And finally, it broke up higher, right? Once more. And... Uh, what is price trying to do now again? It looks like, you know, it's about to, you know, go into consolidation mode once again, right? As you can see down here. So this is uh, interest intricacies of, of dollar yen pair or something to, you know, look out for. So for those traders who are still bullish and want to get long, I would say where a, a good value to long is around this support level that is highlighted over here. So something to pay attention to as well on the dollar yen, right? Notice the pattern that it likes to sleep before it wake up and push higher, then it falls into sleep again and before heading higher once more. So this is the dollar yen. And next up, let's look at the S&P 500, right? So this is the weekly chart of the S&P and longer term, the chart is definitely still bullish, right? You can see price supported by both the 20 and 50 period moving average over here. So every time you notice, you know, price come towards the, I would say into this zone, right? It tends to bounce off pretty quickly. But in recent weeks, you know, notice that price is actually consolidating rather than, you know, pushing higher, right? Consolidating between this high and this low. <coughs> Oh, excuse me. Yeah. So for the S&P 500, so nonetheless, you know, longer term is still bullish, but it's in the consolidation right now. 
And if you look at the daily chart, right, price is pretty messed up if you ask me, right? Price has been uh, swinging back and forth, right? Between the, this area over here and this highs over here. And there's, I think, an interim support down here once more. So uh, I would say, you know, if this fails to hold, right, another level you look to attack is at this support over here. So it's a chart I definitely would like to stay out of because I don't like to trade this uh, whipsaw price action kind of markets. Usually I'll stay out till price break out in my intended direction before I look for entry to get long. So S&P 500, no doubt that it's a uh, longer term in a bullish uptrend still, but I do not have a trigger to get long. So it's a market I'll stay out of. So just to share with you guys. So look at DAX, all right? Uh, DAX is something I would say different for the S&P. It is in an uptrend, but it's much more cleaner, cleaner down here, right? Look at this strong parabolic move towards the upside, all right? So DAX is definitely... At this moment, a relatively stronger market to long compared to the S&P. And look at the daily chart. You can see some historical patterns as well, right? I think it tends to, tends to well, almost respect the 20-period moving average, right? But it always, you know, before it even touches it, you will rally it off higher. So I'll say the 20-EMA is something to watch on DEX. And, you know, it's a relatively stronger market compared to the S&P. And if you have to look to be long on the indices, I'll say check out the DEX because it's actually signaling sign of strength. And I think part of the reason is because of QE that occurred in Europe, I think, I think a couple of months back when Draghi announced. So this explains why the strength of the index over the S&P 500 as well. So next up, let's look at crude oil. Crude oil weekly chart. As you know, you know crude oil, I've been, sh I've been short, for, short for quite a while before I, I bail out all my entire positions. And right now, I have a short bias on crude oil, but I don't have a trigger to, to get short as well. Right? Look at the weekly chart. We saw this. I don't know how many Sigma event this is, this entire slide down. But right now, you know, on the longer term time frame on the weekly, you know, there's no sign of a reversal just yet. This could potentially be a double bottom, but a double bottom is, you know, never confirmed until this resistance, right, is taken out. So meaning price tested once, tested twice, then price rallied higher, break out of this resistance. Then we can confirm it's a double bottom because if not, no, at this stage, it's just, it's just you know, potential double bottom, but not yet a true double bottom. So just something to take note of, right? And likewise, even if it's, let's say, you know, even if it's, if it's a real double bottom where price break out higher, there's no reason to say, you know, why not price may do another false break out higher over here before railing coming down lower once more. So nothing is certain or fixed in the market, just that, you know, we, we always have a plan A, B, and C, you know, if price does this, what are we going to do next? So we always have a contingency plan, you know, to plan for our, our man risk management so that we do not always get I would say do not get burned in the market. Do not you know lose our entire trading account because of a few a few wrong trades. So that's trading for you. And look at WTI, all right, the crude oil on the daily chart again. One small price. You notice it's also respecting the twenty and fifty period moving average over here. So again, it's in between the zone right now. So it'll be interesting to watch what price does next over here. So up next, let's look at gold. So gold. This is a weekly chart of gold, all right. So in fact, I got. I got shot some time back and I got stopped out. So, but nonetheless, let's look at you know, gold. You know, so you see lower highs here, 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 and here. Respecting the 20 and 50 as well, but tends to do a false breakout a few times, right? Did a false breakout once over here, once over here, and once over here. So right now, you know, price then traded lower, came back and about to retest this area once more. So what can we expect for gold? I mean, longer term is still bearish because of the lower highs that we've seen. and But we also know one thing is that it's being supported by this support area over here. I think this is about the 1150 level, support around the 1150 level. So something to take note of. So again, you know, although I have a bearish bias for gold, there's no trigger for me to get shot at, at now, for now. So I'm just watching what gold will do next. So look at the daily chart. Again, you know, it's pretty messed up, similar to the S&P 500, right? Given my trading plan, though, it's not something that I would trade and something I'll stay out, actually. So, yep. Another chart to look at. Let's look at the natural gas. Natural gas is another interesting thing, right? So, as I mentioned earlier, you know, the dollar yen, it, it tends to sleep before it wakes up. Again, I think natural gas also exhibit this kind of tendency. If you look back on the weekly chart, you know, it tends to consolidate, then it breaks out higher, then it does a slight pullback, then it breaks out higher, and does this entire whipsaw price action. Then it breaks out higher, consolidate a little before then before uh, I'll say extending higher. So if you'll notice the last couple of this, I think this gotta be months, alright, last few months, right? It tends to, you know, consolidate pretty quiet. Then it broke down lower, consolidate a while. It did a false breakup towards the upside before smashing down lower once more. And right now, if you ask me what is price doing, right? It seems to be you no know, consolidating as well. And my best guess, alright, 
okay, my guess, all right, is that price may come and test lower at this low over here, right? This is just a guess. You know, I could be wrong because I'm usually wrong more than half the time. But, you know, given the, I would say, the historical pattern of natural gas, all right, I'm guessing that this could potentially happen in the coming weeks or months, all right? So I could be wrong. You know, price could also, you know, I would say do a false breakout lower before trading higher. Yeah, that could be possible as well. So these are all the scenarios that could occur in the market. So it doesn't matter. Honestly, no one can predict, you know, 80% of the time what the market's going to do, all right? What you can only do is to manage your downside, right? Have a risk, have a stop loss to protect you when you're wrong and get out of the trade when you're proven wrong. That's that's what you can do as a trader. Other than that, you know, there's no point trying to predict whether you're right 70% or 80% of the time because it's pretty much irrelevant if you are, you could be right 80% of the time and you risk a dollar and each time you're right, you only make 50 cents. Overall, I would say you're, you're not going to be very profitable compared to someone who maybe only is right 20% of the time but when he's wrong, he loses one dollar. But when he's right, he makes twenty dollar. I mean, the person who is wrong more often than the time is still more profitable than someone who is right more of the time, more more often than, than the time. So this is some something for you to, to share with you, right? So and this is actually all I have for you this week, right? This is the macro perspective of what I think across the board. I hope you guys find it useful. And if there's anything, right, just feel free to leave comments on my YouTube page. I think Classify was pretty. Pretty, pretty responsive on my YouTube comments, so he left quite a bit of comments and I was responding to all his questions. So feel free to leave it on YouTube or on my website. I reply to all comments as well as email, right? With that, I wish you guys good luck and good trading. I'll talk to you soon.